Welcome to Light Over Heat with Professor David Yamani. This week I have the second of my five-part series on the irrationality of defensive gun ownership. Today I will talk about why scholars say that guns are not used for or useful for self-defense. Before I start, let me say welcome to some of the new viewers who are seeing my videos for the first time. And let me clarify that what I'm doing in this series is not arguing for what I actually believe or what I actually find in my own research, but I'm trying to convey what the vast majority of scholars working on the issue of guns say about defensive gun ownership and use. So don't shoot the messenger. I'll have some critical comments as we go along, but I think it's important to clearly and fairly articulate what the logic of this standard model of the irrationality of defensive gun ownership says. It's a really good practice, whether you're talking to friends, family, if you're debating, or if you're working in an academic setting, to always read with the grain of the text to accurately convey what people are actually saying before you read against the grain of the text or you critique what people are doing. So I'm hopeful that the people who contribute to this standard model will look at this video series and say, yes, that fairly represents what we say, and that then they will entertain my critical comments because I have fairly characterized what their arguments are. Okay, let's get into the data. Today we're talking about the second point in the standard model, which discounts the need for and the utility of guns for self-defense. Where does this discounting come from? It comes from the use of the National Crime Victimization Survey as the primary source of data. Now this goes back at least to a piece in 1994, which found that there were between 1987 and 1990, 64,615 defensive gun uses per year, uh, and that firearms were used in less than 1% of violent offenses. So 0.83% in 28% of those cases, the firearms were discharged. In 72% of those cases, people just threatened to use the firearm. Is 64,000 a year a lot or a little? Well, the authors argue that in a cost-benefit analysis, that this is not enough of a benefit to offset the hundreds of thousands of crimes committed annually with firearms. A very widely cited study in 2015 also uses the National Crime Victimization Survey from 2007 until 2011 and they find that in 0.9% of cases, the victim used a firearm in self-defense. So again, when talking about the need for firearms in self-defense, they're going to argue that in 99% of contact crimes, a gun was not used in self-defense, and therefore in this cost-benefit weighting, guns are more often used for criminal purposes than for lawful defensive purposes. Now, I'm never one to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but exclusive use of the National Crime Victimization Survey to understand defensive gun uses has some limitations. In the first place, it asks respondents about victimizations that they experienced during the prior six months. And some people, including people that I personally know, who used guns to defend themselves would not think of themselves as having been victimized. You don't have to be a believer in the NRA's slogan, refuse to be a victim, to think that if you used your gun to defend yourself, you actually were not victimized precisely because you had a gun. And so I think this dramatically undercounts the number of defensive gun uses by screening for people who thought of themselves as having been victimized. In addition, it also relies on people to self-report whether they used guns in self-defense. So it doesn't prompt them 
uh, by asking, did you use a gun? It just asks, how did you defend yourself? Certainly there are some people who are in doing surveys like this uh, with a government agency who would not want to say that they used a gun to defend themselves for fear of some sort of uh, negative repercussions that could come from that. So that would also undercount the frequency of defensive gun uses that show up in this data. And we know as scholars working in the field that the issue of defensive gun use is contested, right? We have estimates all the way from in the tens of thousands up into the millions. Just recently, uh, a scholar has come up with an estimate about 1.6 million defensive gun uses per year. And so reality is probably somewhere in the middle, but even if it is somewhere in the middle, that balances out that cost benefit equation more than these scholars allow it when they say that it is rare for gun owners to use firearms to defend themselves. And even if it is the lowest estimate in less than 1% of cases, tens of thousands of people a year, those are tens of thousands of people a year who I am sure don't care what the overall statistics say about defensive gun use. They're probably quite happy that they were able to use their firearms to defend themselves. The second part of this point in the standard model is that guns are not useful for self-defense, even in that small number of cases that they allow that people use guns in self-defense. For example, they say, compared to other protective actions, the National Crime Victimization Surveys provide little evidence that self-defense gun use is uniquely beneficial in reducing the likelihood of injury or property loss. And that data appears in some fairly complex tables that, as you can see, I've read a number of times over the years. I've assigned this article to my students. And one of the reasons that they make this claim that there's no unique protective benefit of guns is because they look at people who were injured after taking the defensive action that they took. And in 4.2% of cases, people who were crime victims were injured after they took whatever defensive action they took, including using a gun. And then they look specifically at those cases where the defensive action was attacking the, the criminal or threatening the criminal with a gun. And in that case, a very similar 4% of people were injured after doing that. So they conclude there's no unique protective benefit of using firearms. But this assumes that the incidents overall and the incidents in which people used a gun to defend themselves are the same. It may in fact be that those incidents in which a person felt so threatened that they need to use a gun were actually more dangerous situations and the fact that there was such a low incidence of injury after suggests that maybe there is some unique protective benefit to using a gun if those conditions are in fact different. I don't assume that every case of victimization is the same. And in fact, if I'm carrying a gun and I'm attacked, I may try some of these other forms of defense first, like yelling at the person, negotiating with the person, running away, and only if the situation is bad enough might I then turn to the gun. So this claim that there's no utility of firearms for self-defense, I think doesn't quite, um, isn't quite established fact yet just based on this analysis. Right? And in fact, the authors admit in the text, right after saying the data provide little evidence that using a gun in self-defense reduces injury, they warn the reader that the sample of those injured after using a gun which were five out of the 127 cases of defensive gun use, is really too small to warrant strong conclusions. So the idea that this article discounts the utility of guns for preventing injury in self-defense situations 
is by the author's own admission impossible to say, and yet it's frequently invoked that way by other scholars in discounting the utility of guns for self-defense. If you've managed to stay with me through this discussion so far, here's some of the payoff. These data that are produced by academics are not simply academic issues. They influence the way that the news media covers the issue of guns and defensive gun use, and they also influence the way politicians understand those issues. For example, this summer, the news advocacy organization, The Trace, published an article called How Often Are Guns Used for Self-Defense? And I'll post a link to this story in the show notes, but if I scroll down to an infographic that they produced for this story, it reads, it's difficult to determine, but the best data we have from the National Crime Victimization Survey indicates people use guns to commit crimes more than to protect themselves. And they use this figure of 70,000 defensive gun uses a year that comes from the National Crime Victimization Survey. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this second of a planned five pieces on this standard model of the irrationality of defensive gun ownership. Next week, we'll talk about why guns don't reduce people's risks, but instead increase their risks. Also, while I have your attention, why not go ahead and subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so that you get notifications for when new videos are released. I promise I'm not going to overwhelm you. I publish one video a week every Wednesday morning.